Hello everyone and welcome to your Chem 113 review on naming polyatomic ions. Uh, my name is Jason and I work for the ASU Tutoring Center. So as I mentioned in the previous video, we, we talked about how to name monoatomic ions and now we're going to talk about naming polyatomic ions. So a polyatomic ion is, is, it's not just a single atom, like in this first case, we have both a nitrogen and four hydrogens. So it's sort of a structure. We have nitrogen bonded to the four hydrogens and that entire structure has a charge on it of plus one. So you have the nitrogens, the hydrogens all around it, and this entire structure has a charge of plus one. Okay, so that's, that's what a polyatomic ion is. Now, naming them, it can be pretty tricky. Um, it, this portion also comes down a lot to memorization, but I'm going to try to, to help you along the way so you don't have to memorize too much. Um, you're basically just going to have to memorize maybe like seven-ish uh, types of polyatomic ions. And then as long as you memorize a couple of rules, you'll be able to figure out all the rest of them. Um, now keep in mind the polyatomic ions I'm going to list here, I'm going to help with. They're the most common ones, but it's not at all a comprehensive list. There are certainly tons of polyatomic ions out there that we're not going to talk about in this video. So this first one. We're going to try to name this. Now, if we look, it's positively charged. It's a cation. Uh, the fortunate thing, polyatomic cations, pretty rare, at least the ones that you need to know. The only ones you need to know, there's two of them. There's NH4+, and there's H3O+. The first one um, is called an ammonium ion. Oops. And the second one's called the hydronium ion. Okay, so again, it's just sort of memorizing, uh, but just just know these. Okay, these are pretty much the only polyatomic cations you need to know are the ammonium and the hydronium ions. Okay, so up here, this one is the ammonium. Okay, now the rest of the ones we're going to be talking about are going to be anions, not cations. So anions, they, the, all the ones we're going to be talking about are, are special things called oxyanions. We're going to talk about oxyanions. So these are anions that involve oxygen in some capacity. I mean, it sort of makes sense, right? So anions with oxygen. Um, these are incredibly common. That's, that's why we're pretty much going to be exclusively talking about oxyanions. Uh, so every single one of the ones we're going to be talking about is an oxyanion, and there is a common rule when it comes to naming them. So pretty much the, the standard oxyanions you want to know all end in eight. And then we can make adjustments on that to get different names. So I'm going to give you five common oxyanions. All of them end in the suffix eight. Okay, so let's make a little table. So we have um, NO3 minus, uh, SO4 two minus, ClO3 minus, PO4 three minus, and CO3 two minus. First one's nitrate, then you have sulfate, then you have chlorate, then you have phosphate, and then you have carbonate. Okay, so these two cations and these five anions, these are the only anions I'm requesting you to memorize. Um, it's going to help you tremendously in chemistry. Memorize these. Once you have these, you're going to be able to derive the rest of them from these, these seven, okay? So uh, all the ones we have listed here, there's not really a rhyme or reason to them, which is unfortunate. Um, so, I mean, they all have like nitrate corresponds to having a nitrogen, sulfate with sul, uh, sulfur, chlorate with chlorine, like that's where that naming comes from. When it comes to the charges and the amount of oxygens, there's not exactly a rhyme or reason to it. So that's why you pretty much just have to memorize it. But once you have these, there are some extra rules. Okay. If you change the suffix from eight to eight, that means you remove an oxygen. 
So for instance, uh, you, sorry, you remove an oxygen, but you keep the charge. That's an important uh, qualifier. Okay, so for instance, right here, number two, it's nitrite ion. So we look at our, our nitrate ion, NO3 minus, and what do we do? We just remove an oxygen. So this one would look like NO2 minus. Okay, so that's how you name those. You simply, you simply either remove or add oxygens depending on what the rule is, but you keep the charge the same. Okay, second rule. Um, aside from just changing the suffix, you can also add a prefix. So if you add the prefix hypo, that means remove another oxygen. I guess I should emphasize that it's a prefix. You remove an oxygen, but again, you keep charge. Charge stays the same. Uh, but then if you add the, the, um, the prefix per, I almost put hyper, but we get rid of the hype. It's just per. Um, if you add the prefix per, then you actually end up adding an oxygen back in there. Okay, so per means add oxygen, but you keep the charge. Okay, so let's, let's break down question number three then. So it's hypochlorite. So we look at its root, it's a chlor, right? So it's gonna be based on this anion right here, this chlorate, right? But it's not a chlorate, it's a chlorite, which means, so if chlorate looks like ClO3 minus, chlorite, based on this, this first rule over here, we would remove an oxygen, so it would be ClO2 minus. But then it also has this prefix here of hypo, which hypo means to remove another oxygen. So if we were to go to hypochlorite, it would be ClO minus. We just removed another oxygen. So hypochlorite is ClO minus. Cool, 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 cool. Um, and then for instance, if you want to see what per would look like, if I were to um, be at the chlorate and I were to make it per chlorate, that would be named uh, ClO4 minus, I would add an oxygen. Notice I would never have something that's per chlorite because what would per chlorite look like? Per means add an oxygen. So per chlorite would be ClO3 minus, which is just chlorate. So per chlorite doesn't make any sense. Uh, you would just add the prefix per to your eights and you would add the, the prefix hypo to your ites. Okay. So these are all the cations you need to memorize. These are the oxyanions you need to memorize and these are the three major rules. Last thing is a case like this where if we look, if we ignore the hydrogen, we have CO3, which is down here at the bottom of the list. But look, at the bottom of the list, it's CO3 two minus, but here it's CO3 minus. Well, the reason for that is this hydrogen. Hydrogen has a plus one charge. So if we were to take this CO3 two minus and add a hydrogen to it, the positive charge of the hydrogen would cancel out with one of the negative charges, giving it an overall minus one charge instead of a minus two. Okay. Um, so it, it makes sense, like the structure of the actual ion makes sense. How would we name this? Well, we would name, we would take the name of the, the ion attached here. So in that case, the carbonate. And all we would do is just add the word hydrogen in front. So we would say hydrogen, carbonate ion, okay? Just take the, the hydrogen, add the carbonate. Now, some, some ions can actually add two hydrogens to them. For instance, if we look at, um, let me do some erasing, because it's getting a little muddled. If we were to look at phosphate, phosphate is very special it's the only one here with a three minus charge. So we could actually add two hydrogens to it 
while keeping it as a, an ion, right? We could go uh, PO4, add two hydrogens to it. And what would the charge be? Well, this is a three minus charge. If I add two hydrogens, that's plus two charges. So negative three plus two gives me an overall charge of minus one. So the phosphate is very special because you can actually add multiple hydrogens. Now, when you do this, the name is slightly different. It's not just hydrogen, because you're not adding a single hydrogen. It's now dihydrogen. Dihydrogen phosphate ion. Because the, the di prefix here meaning two, two hydrogens. Okay, so again, these are the only cations you need to know. These are the only anions you need to know. And, and again, your, your teacher might have extra ones, so you know, leave it up to your teacher. Uh, but these are your cations, these are your anions, there's five of them, and these are just the rules you need to know about adding and subtracting oxygens. And then as long as you know when you add a hydrogen, you literally just put the word hydrogen in front, then you're all set. You now know how to name your polyatomic ions. Fantastic. Uh, thank you for joining me. As I mentioned at the beginning, I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. If you want more information about the tutoring services that we offer on your campus, um, please visit tutoring.asu.edu slash content slash tutor dash search. Uh, by going here, you'll be able to find a tutoring service um, on your campus that'll be able to help you with your course. Thank you again, and I hope you have a fantastic day.